But I guarantee you, if the Lord willing, I will be here the following Wednesday. We're going to begin the new series in Chapter 6. Uh, and I thought it was appropriate to take a break and, and uh, breathe for a moment and spend some time with the Queen. Amen? Amen. 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 All right, Matthew 5, 43 through 48 from the King James Version. Uh, you have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. You may be seated Amen. in the presence of the Lord. Amen. 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 For a brief moment, we want to continue this last part six. Uh, Slide Micaiah. Loving those who hurt us. Loving those who hurt us. Loving those. Find a neighbor. Say neighbor. Neighbor. Loving those, Loving those who hurt us. Who hurt us. Find us. another neighbor. Say neighbor. neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Us. <laughs> I <can't wait> down. <laughs> Mom Betty Carter is not here. She said, for such a little man, you got a big mouth. <laughs> she said, I only thought big preachers could talk like that. Amen. Well, we can muster it up if we need to go some couple of decibels higher. But let me turn our attention to why it was so hot in here on Wednesday night. We went through uh, just a couple of these verses and it, boy, it was burning up in here. Uh, we're still talking about Sean at home, Sean Gross, and the testimony he gave was just powerful, yet true, and we all can relate. So, the law of Moses, the interpretation, we continue to beat this drum, and Jesus' authority is what's on the table this morning, church, and we won't be long. Uh, the letter of the law versus the spirit of the law. So we talked in week one, or part one, murder, the act itself, anger of the heart. We talked in part two, adultery, the act itself, and the lust of the heart. Then we talked about divorce, the act itself, commitment of the heart. These are all heart matters, because yes. uh, from the heart flows the issues of life. Yes. Oath slash vows, the act itself, truth of the heart. Last week, an eye for an eye and a two for a two retaliation of the heart. And Vanessa, lastly, today we want to talk about love your neighbor and hate your enemy. The second part, Teresa, is not even in the scriptures. <laughs> love of the heart. And so what we did, Micaiah, we, we turned the slide and we talked about the right and wrong or ethical principles, if you can read that, in summation of the Sermon on the Mount, Listen, is the law of Christ. It's also known as the law of love. Now, we went horizontal, first of all, Dr. Stewart, to define love, which is a deep affection, a fondness, an intimacy, attachment, endearment, passion, desire. And so then we went vertical and talked about these two uh, 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 forms of love. The third one is not in the Word of God, but we talked about phileo. And I know my Philadelphian to my left, and you're right, Michelle will identify that it is the city of brotherly love. And we are quite friendly, but if you're a sports team, we will boo you. <laughs> if you ain't doing right, all hell power to the Villanova Wildcats. <laughs> to my friend Ryan Klein and Dayton, I'm sorry. Go blue, now they went blue. And to the Eagle fans, flap your wings. This is turn off your pride up here. Amen. Now to the Philadelphia 76ers, 17 in a row. Amen. Oh, I got two Philadelphia fans right here. I guess it's just me, Dr. Thomas, and Michelle, and Hillary. Okay, anyway, 
Uh, Eros, we talked about Russell was erotic or sensual, sexual love, and then storage it is a word that's not found in the word of God, but it's family loyalty. Uh, and then we drop down to the biblical love, uh, which God is love. God does not have to manifest love, Kim. He is love. That's affirmative. Yeah. So in conversation, uh, uh, you have some people who are looking for their own rights, uh, uh, Jordana, uh, who feel as though uh, uh, I can do what I want to do. God is love and he still loves me. Uh, isn't that right? And I say to that, yes and no. Yes, he is love, but no to your behavior that he does not love. Amen. He loves you, but it's not your behavior. It's your behavior that he does not tolerate. Yeah. Uh, he is a God of wrath. Yeah. Amen. I'll get to this at the end, but, but something's burning my ear right here. And Jodine and I are on the same page. Mm -hmm. And where's uh, Gigi? She's on the same page. We'll talk about that towards the end. But, but let's be truthful. God is love. But God has a place for those who do not confess his son as Lord and Savior. I want to be clear this morning and concise. Uh, the father loves the son, Russell. Uh, he made his will known to the son. The son loves the father. We gave some scriptures on Wednesday night. We looked at the unity of the two. And the reason why uh, the father loves the son and the son loves the father, I don't want to get it twisted. Uh, I just want you to have the truth. Uh, it's through Jesus' demonstration uh, of him. Uh, and his submission and his obedience, Robert, is the reason why God loves him. Mm -hmm. Amen, church. Amen. So, so when we say we love God, Trenton, it's a matter of our demonstration and our submission to his will. Amen. Is this mic working? It's working. Amen. Amen. So, so it's one thing to, to come to church. I, I'm not going to be hard. It's one thing to come to church, uh, but it's another to demonstrate uh, the love that God has for us and we love uh, uh, him. Uh, by our submission. We said on Wednesday night that there are three things that we believe salvation contains. One is our surrender of our will. Yeah. You have to surrender your will. I can't have him and my will at the same time. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. Number next is that we must submit to his will. So if I want to surrender my will, God doesn't leave us uh, Michelle, floating around with nothing to do. If I'm going to surrender mine, he wants me to submit to his. Mm -hmm. And then we talk thoroughly, and I said to the class on, on, on Wednesday night, uh, this is like a nurse getting ready to give you a needle and preparing you say, one, two, three, out. <laughs> the third one is, is that we have to sacrifice. Yes. That's our time, our talent, our temple, and our treasure. Right, right. Yes. Come on, Doc. Yeah. Amen. That's when God knows you're saying yes to Christ and him by the submission and, and, and the sacrifice and the obedience, Chris, that we have towards him in those areas that I just mentioned. And so lastly, we brought the, the, the third or the fourth one uh, of the loves, which is agape, uh, and that is the unconditional love. One of the things that I love about God, uh, uh, Joe and Sean, is, is, is the truth that God loves us right where we are. No con See, James, some people have conditions. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> some, some of us, let me be honest, some of us have conditions. Yes. Amen, somebody. Amen. You make me mad, don't talk to me. I can't deal with you. But if we love like God loves, we have to love our faults, our flops, and our flounders, our mistakes. We got to love everything about us the same way God loves us. Yeah. Now, some people wake up to me and look in the mirror. They don't even like themselves. Wow. <laughs> and are mad at who they are. So the next slide brings us to our point. I'm, I'm going to hasten and take my time uh, at the same time. But watch this. You have <laughs> Somebody caught that over here. <laughs> That's like hurry up and wait. You have heard it said, thou shalt love thy neighbor. We said Wednesday night, Teresa, that whenever you see capital letters in the scriptures, that's God speaking. And these are caps, all caps. Yeah. Thou shalt love thy neighbor. How many of us have some neighbors you just don't love? Mm -hmm. I got one hand. <laughs> they were much more lively on where you got everybody with your neighbors like on a roller coaster getting ready to go down. <laughs> all of us have neighbors that we don't care much about. I said this Wednesday night, I'll say it again, the ADT representative of our neighbor who I had in the upper room we're sitting across the desk and we're discussing the security of this building. And she said, Pastor, I have some neighbors 
I just can't stand you. And she did not say, you ought to be here Wednesday night. <laughs> just talking about, I didn't tell her that, she just kept talking. She said, no, 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 I'm not prejudiced. Uh, <laughs> if you say, if you, tell, you tell somebody you're not prejudiced, guess what? <laughs> but here's why Wednesday night is so powerful. Deacon Marshall opened his mouth and broke down racism and prejudice. Oh my God. Yes, he did. Woo! Yes, he did. Lit this place on fire. Yes, he did. Then Sean came with his testimony like, church out. So we just missed it. We were on our way. But, but here's the thing. Uh, the word says, you have heard it say, thou shalt love thy neighbor. Now the Pharisees and the Sadducees, Vanessa, uh, had no problem with that. So, so the question that we raised out of Luke 10, 25, 37, uh, we took it another level, and you can read these with me. Uh, there are four things that I wanted the Bible study to see, and for you all to see this morning. Uh, who is my neighbor? These are just four. Listen to this. Next time while driving, and we're cut off. Well, that's your neighbor. That's your neighbor. That one did the same thing Wednesday night. Number next. Next time, Nathan, we see a homeless person on the side of the road in the street. And you miss Dr. Gabriel Grayson just opened up his heart and Natalie right behind him, his wife to be. Oh man, the other two just preach by themselves. Wednesday night, we just had a host of conversation. This one will never be the same. They just preached about the ground zero and looking at a person the way God looks at them. And you don't know who it is you're dealing with because they're angel, um, you're attending unaware. It was a powerful night. But next time we see a homeless person on the side of the road or the street, and then Deacon Marshall said, well, we've got to be careful because some of those panhandlers average $100,000 a year. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So what we came up with last night in a way with discernment. You have to be able to discern. And God pulling on your heart. And here's what Dr. Grayson said, Gabriel said to us. He said, once I let it go, I don't think about it. Amen. That's between God and Amen. 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 Right. Amen. Number three. Next time we gossip about someone we don't like. <laughs> I don't know if I can pluck my tongue out. <laughs> Somebody said, move along, past, move along. Number four, next time our paths cross any other person with whom we live or whom we meet, regardless of nationality or faith. And immediately I threw out just as a spark, Morse Road. Mm. And that thing lit up Ooh. the shell like a yeah. trip. Everybody knew what I meant by yeah. this room. That's all I had to say. And then here comes Natalie Amore, which is Gabriel's fiance, and said, well, I work with someone who is of a different nationality. And we have to get into the mindset, one size doesn't fit all. Amen, Amen church. Amen. One size, she said she met the most beautiful person of a different nationality, she explained her faith. The other person explained her faith. She said, oh, I didn't know what you thought like that. I didn't know you thought like that, but they have an understanding. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah, what a time we had here Wednesday night. And, and so it leads us to the understanding uh, 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 that what the Pharisees and Sadducees next said in the next slide says, hate thine enemy. Uh, in Deuteronomy 23, 3, 6, we talked about that. So we define what an enemy was. I'm going to move this along. One who hates another, wishes him or her injury, attempts to do injury, to gratify their own malice or ill will. Uh, public, uh, one who belongs to a nation or party at war with each other. That's the public setting. Now, theologically, uh, uh, by way of eminence, distinction, recognized superiority, our enemy church, now watch this, we threw this in, we didn't get this far on Wednesday night, but we threw this in here for the church this morning to get this, to understand who the real enemy is. Amen. Amen. The devil is our enemy. That's right. Amen. 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 Not my child. It's not my spouse. It's not my co-worker. It's not my supervisor. It's not the person at the bank, Larry, who won't give me the loan. The enemy is the devil. Amen. And one who opposes the will of God is our enemy. Now, the devil can use people to get to you. You ever heard your parents say, what the devil got into you? You ever say that to your children? Oh, yeah. Amen, somebody. Amen. Yeah, he gets into them. 
Uh, can I say this to you and, and, and be straight laced? God and, and Satan needs a body to operate. Amen. They, they will operate Amen. through bodies. Amen? Because they're spirit beings. Yes. So just as God is operating on with Joe and Sean up here playing, all of us worshiping and all of that, Satan on the other side is in this room at the same time. Yes. Trying to put somebody's fire out. Amen. Amen. Come on, I feel like preaching now. Let me turn this thing up. And, and so what, what, what the word says is hate your enemy. What the Pharisees did, according to the PowerPoint presentation church, was this was an addition. Watch that word. <coughs> an addition of, of what they thought and what they believed, but it's not God's word. We are never to hate someone else. Amen. That's easier said than done. Amen. But we are not. Let me ask you a question that you ponder for about three seconds. Why do you think that is? Good enough. <laughs> it was an addition in the, in the law of Moses uh, uh, and I asked the question why? Well let me answer the question that I asked you because we were once enemies of God yes. and so if God saved us and those we look at who we say skip, he can't do nothing with God wants to use us to bring them to him Teresa, I got some difficult people in my life that I have to deal with. Amen. And I want to do something else with them. Two of them. But God said, no, I saved you, so thank you, Sandy, that you can lead them to me. The same way someone led you who was an enemy to me. And so that's why it's not found in the scriptures to hate your enemy. Jesus turns this thing upside down and says, we are to love our enemies. So watch this. Old Testament revelation in Proverbs 25, 21, and then contrast that with Psalm 140, 10. That's your assignment when you go home or sometime during the week when Cheryl distributes this to you, uh, morning to you all. But I wanted to give you 10 things, a quote I found about enemies, and we'll move this out. So watch this. The Bible tells us to love our neighbors and also to love our enemies, probably because generally they are the same people. Can you smile? <laughs> It's infectious. Yeah, they're probably the same people. Hello. Number two, someone with no enemies is someone with no character. Someone with no enemies is someone with no character. Be on guard against your enemies, but God delivered you from your friends. I know this is right, but y'all quiet. Your friends will believe in your potential. Your enemies will make you live up to them. Out of all those quotes I asked you, I picked these on purpose because they was eating me up. So now y'all know it's bugging pastor. Number five, friends ask you questions, enemies question you. Okay. Number six, enemies can't break your spirit, only friends can. Amen. Number seven, we can learn from our enemies. Amen. Amen. Number eight, faith activates God, fear activates the enemy. Amen. Number nine, destroy your enemy by making them your friends. Amen. And number ten, we'll lead into our text. That's why we chose it. Love your enemies, for they will tell you your faults. Amen. It's just me and you, Joe Daniel. She got her eyes on her. Hey, Pastor, you met her. So here are some points of significance, Bob, and I'm going to move quickly and, and get out your way. Uh, uh, the first thing that Jesus does, watch this, uh, in verse 44, he says, But I say unto you, love your enemies. Now watch this. Uh, we are to love, L-O-V-E, our enemies. Now, he says, bless them that curse you. So in other words, those who speak bad about you, that word blessing, the Greek means to speak well of them. You know how hard that is? This is the way just say, ouch. Someone who's cursing you, you're to speak well of them. Amen. Mom Robinson had, had, when we started this Wednesday night, she opened us up. And she sits here, and I can hear what she said. When we said, uh, uh, love your neighbor and, 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 and love your enemy, she said, I need a new pair of glasses, Pastor. <laughs> I can't see that. <laughs> that line stuck with me the whole week long. But true, we're going to need a new pair of glasses when this is over. Yeah. To love our enemies and love our neighbors. So watch this. Bless them that curse you. Uh, do good to those that hate you. 
Do good to those that hate you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. You ever pray for someone and you know they are despitefully using you? Yes. Yes. And persecute you. Now, in the parentheses, we took our time and told you what persecution was. Henrietta told me not to use her no more because she sits on the first row, so I won't. <laughs> I'll use an imaginary friend. <laughs> to make Steve. Steve. <laughs> I need you to be a Christian and a saint that I know you are of God, and I'm going to be your enemy, and I want the congregation to see what persecution looks like. So I just want you to just saunter, not, not walk fast, saunter me, just take your time. Like you know, on the walkway, you know, runway. Okay? <laughs> you know, just take your time and walk slow. And I want to show you what persecution. If I'm his enemy, I am hot on his heel. Go slow. I'm hot on his heel. It's just not that I'm following him because I like to follow him. I want to do him injury. I want to hurt him. I do. Physically, mentally, however I can, I want to injure him from his walk he's taking, right? And he don't even know I'm here or something. You don't even know your enemies are chasing you sometimes. They hot on your heels. Yeah. If you live in a Christian life, you have someone following you. Come back for a minute, because we're running out of space. <laughs> walk slow. You have someone following you with the intent to hurt you and to, now if you notice, I'm not in front of him, Trent. He would see me coming. Right. I'm behind him. All right. And that's why you need, Michelle, but what you said about one reason, like, bless my socks. You need to put on the whole armor of God before your day starts. Because your adversary is, 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 coming to, is coming after you. He's going to pursue you through your children, your spouse, your co-workers, somebody you don't know. All those things I listed on those top ten. There are many ways he's trying to injure you, Amen. to take you, and this is the path God wants you to walk. He wants you out of that path and out of the way of the direction of God. Come on, yeah. come on. To injure you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Tell him. Good. Thank you. To injure you. That's what persecution means. The intent is to hurt you. There are, and I like. Uh, Elder Corbett said this to me and, and Elder Brown in, in the elder meeting a couple weeks ago. Uh, 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 these are not up for debate. Maybe I missed something. They're not up for debate, church. You have to love those who hate you. I can't think about it, beloved, and say, you know my training today, guess what? I ain't doing that, God. <laughs> You don't know what they did. You don't understand what they said. You have no idea. Yeah, he does. Just look at his son. There are a thousand and fifty commandments in the New Testament. Now, I put that word why there in parentheses because two-year-olds, terrible twos, I need you to do this, boo. Why? <laughs> We're going to hit why. But there are some 20 plus year olds who may want to know why. That's right. You ever do that with God? I don't ask him why. I sure do. Yeah, I do. I don't like the answer that comes back. But I question him sometimes. And so I know someone sitting there saying, Well, Pastor, why do I have to do all of that? Why? How come I got to love those who hate me? Why do I have to yield to those who persecute me and you want me to demonstrate your love towards them that you, they might be saved? Why, why, why? You ever ask me why? Sure you have. If you're a saint and a child of God, you ask him why. You have a right to do that. And Jesus answers Nathan in verse 45. That's what I like about God. He don't leave nothing uncovered. Amen. You ask the question, here's your answer. That we may be like children of our, there's your why answer. So Chris, I know now, what I knew 40 years ago, but reinforced through this lesson, I still have to love those who do not like me. That's right. Amen. That's right. Those who despitefully use me, Tony, 
I still have to bless them even though they want to curse me. Because if we're Christians, the word Christian means Christ-like. We're going to be like Christ when we do that. And then our Father, which is in heaven, knows that that, that is necessary. I'll get to the punchline in a minute. He maketh his son to rise. This part of the text Jesus messed me up with. So you mean to tell me, Earl, that he blesses those who want to jack me up in life? Yes, sir, he does. Tony, my finite man can't understand that. You mean to tell me he cares just as much for those who don't like me, Trenton? And I love him? Yes, he does. Amen. You mean to tell me those who persecute me and want to injure me, he still blesses them? God is not a God of, of prejudice. And we can't put him in a box and say he's all ours and not yours. He loves everybody the same. He reigns on the just and the unjust. He causes his sun to shine on those that do not like him. That's why you know he's God, because if it was me, I don't know about you. <laughs> they have a one-way ticket to hell. <laughs> Ain't got no time waiting for folks who don't love me. <laughs> Girl, boy, bye. <laughs> You ever felt like that? Yes. Yes. You don't know who you're talking to. You know who I am. We puff up our chest and stick up our raise up on folk. Yeah, you are sinner saved by grace. Amen. Oh, I feel like preaching this thing. Let me move out of here. So, so, so he causes the sun to rise, watch this, on the evil and on the good, and send his rain on the just and the unjust. So, so 46 says, For if you love them which love you now, New Antioch Bible Fellowship, August the 15, 2018, much love. Much love. I brag about y'all. I talk about y'all. I tell you people at work. I go to Black Avenue. I got the best congregation in the world. And I do. But in here, that's nice. Come on. And in here, we should love each other. And in here we should embrace each other. And in here we should care for each other. But the battle is outside the door. Can I love them like I love you? Thank you. And if God sent me down on that and said, you ain't that grown up yet. But that's I thought I've been graduated Christianity 101. I'm still stuck. Been left behind. Because I can't get past somebody who don't like me. Can I say something to y'all? It ain't about us. It's all about him. So whether you like me or not, that's your problem. Come on now. Because I'm good in my skin. I know I belong to the same Savior. I know who raised me up from the dead. I know who brought me a mighty long way. But here's the inverse of all of that. I still got to embrace you and put my arms around you and tell you I love you the same. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Y'all yeah. ain't talking back to me. <laughs> oh, I know. This is horrible. <laughs> Janice, they call this training arithmetic back home. Just can't figure it out. Right. <laughs> And it is, but we can with his grace and his mercy that we receive from him. It's going to take time. But we can do it. There's somebody who hurt me and my family, but I still love them. Thank you. And they're at a distance, Trent, but I still love them. Because God says I have to. It was left up to me to just be family at the end. No more. But he says, you still got to love them the same way I loved you. And some of us have some family members in this room who did you wrong. Come on. And we haven't moved past. Thank you, Steve, for helping me out three weeks ago with your testimony. Even though they're at a distance, we can love from a distance. Yeah. And should they come in our presence, embrace them when they get here. Because God still loves them. All right. All right. 
that we may be like our Father which is in heaven. For we love them which love us. What reward do we have? Jesus is asking the disciples the question. It's easy to love the saints here in this, in this sanctuary. Or we should. He says, do not even the publicans. And he throws in the tax collectors. Now, if you know anything about historicity in the tax collectors, Matthew, who is writing this gospel, is one of them. Amen. Mm. Wow. And God uses him. Mm -hmm. They hate tax collectors. Yes. They were friends with Rome, one, and then two, they would charge a surcharge above and beyond what the taxes were and take that and stick it in their pocket and make a lovely income. How many of us like paying more taxes than you have to? Amen. Mm. Hey, I don't like paying them at all. <laughs> Who is Uncle Sam anyway? <laughs> hey, he got enough money by now? Right. True story, when my son first started working, this is going to cost a man he got his first paycheck. He opened it up and looked at it. He said, who is Social Security? He can't be. <laughs> and we don't even know what's going to be there for us. Somebody's going to have my money when I get to see it someday. I'm telling you right now. All that right there, God. <laughs> y'all can retire all y'all want, Mr. Senator, Mr. Congressman. I'm going to find out where you live. <laughs> Boy, my money ain't going to pay it back. Exactly. Y'all see, I need help already. <laughs> I need help already. That's what my queen. No, no, no. But that's how the publicans do. <laughs> so we gotta pray for fast. <laughs> but they do the same thing. And forty-seven says, if you salute your brother only. One of the toughest things that I have in my personal livelihood, uh, my living, and my walk with God. It, it is walking over to someone who I know don't like me and saying good morning to them. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. I do. I do. And I tried it one time, Tony. And they said it's just Monday. What's good about it? That was that. But the idea. And here, here's the other side of that skin. Other side of that is, you say good morning to somebody, and they just start talking to you like, I ain't asked you for all that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get out of here now. And they say, do you have a minute? No, not really. And they just start telling you, well, you know, I'm going through something. And all of a sudden, God turns that moment into a ministry moment. Yes. Yes. But Vanessa, I'm so busy trying to get back in my cubicle so I can clock in and do some work when they write me up. Since he's spending my time with you. It's moments like that. Greeting all of you this morning was no issue, no stretch, no strain, no struggle. Amen. Deep, I'm glad to see you, man. I want to slob on you. Happy to see you, boy. Amen. <laughs> Happy to see all of y'all. But I got somebody at work. <laughs> Seven tomorrow, somebody says swing is on. That's for a reason. <laughs> Seven tomorrow, guess what? That clock starts running, especially after nap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. 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 You've been told. And heaven is waiting to record the scene. One of the greatest moments with Job, as I digress and take my time, with Job, with Satan and God, is they are watching us. And God is saying, have you tried my service, Sean? Mm. <laughs> Satan said, you got to head around it. Take Bob out the way and watch me bless him. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> He's just close. <laughs> Could be any of us. Amen. And they're watching us to see if we're going to apply that which we just heard today. I guarantee you, wherever you're going, whether it's in your own house, I got to start there first. Come on. You want to have a moment with someone you don't want to deal with. Mm -hmm. Child, mm -hmm. spouse, relative, in-law, outlaw, wow. auntie, uncle, uncle, whoever it may be. Mama, Papa, Papa, somebody gonna mess you up. And this is gonna come right back and hit you. You gotta go embrace them. Wow. <laughs> I got a witness. So, so, so watch this. So, so, so watch this. So he said, be therefore uh, perfect. 
uh, 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 watch this and, and salute your brother only what do you more than others. That's no more than what the publicans do. They do that as well. Uh, uh, be ye therefore perfect. Now, let me spend the bulk of my time because this sermon was so so quick uh, 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 to the word. Uh, uh, perfect here uh, is not sinless. We're not talking about someone who's sinless. All of us sin and fall short of the glory of God. Amen. For too long, I'll give you, give you the moment I'm talking about from Wednesday night. Wednesday night was just powerful. For too long, we got people from the pulpit to the parking lot who think they're perfect. Yeah. Amen. I know there's no K in there, but I feel that in there just for the medical <laughs> people. They do. They'll look at you with their eyes over the top of their glasses, walk above you like they're on cloud nine, and go past you uh, in the pulpit. Come on. Yeah. Amen. To the parking lot. Somebody said, no, yeah, we do. And one of the saints testified, not to blow me up or toot my own horn. She said, Pastor, what we love about you is you're so human and so real. To share who you really are with us is a powerful moment in our lives. Amen. Amen. I didn't back off that and Dick and Marshall went on and testified to the same. That's by design. Yes. That I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. That I do have faults. That I do fall short. Do I do cuss sometimes? No. Oh. <laughs> Amen. I know the tape is right. <laughs> I do. I do return the favor. I do raise my eyebrows up, Skip. Like I'm the only one and this is my road you're on. Right, right. Get out my way. I do have some folks from the network that I can't stand. Make my skin crawl. But at the same time, God's spirit is saying, you're going to have to do better than that. That's right. Amen. 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 You have to do better. Yes. Because your Father in heaven yes. is perfect. Yes. That's right. Mm -hmm. Sinless. Yes. There's a punchline I'm going with in about two minutes. I'm going to give it to you. But I like where we work. Just think about that. <clears throat> don't tell your kids. Don't let your kids see you like you're perfect. That's right. That's right. Come on, God. That's right. Daddy is wrong. You come to my house when the teacher was little, this sister would fuss me out right in front of him. <laughs> Just give me the business. I said, sweetie, take me upstairs and shut the door. Don't let him. But I had to tell him, I'm not perfect. She's not perfect. We're not. And the, <laughs> the, so <laughs> the sooner we got him to understand that, the more fruitful the, the family relationship became. Because, listen to this, if you're all still and yelling at your kids like you're perfect, right. and you're not velvet, you ought to take a note right there, parents have to be still and velvet. That's right. Hard enough not to let them just run over you, right. but soft enough to embrace them in their error. Amen. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Amen. No, I'm talking right. Can I go this way, Trent? You have to be a disciplinarian and a nurturer. Yes. You can't beat your kids all the time. Amen. Right. Talking about John Wayne, this is what my parents did to me. <laughs> <laughs> Nowadays, them boogers are dying 911 on you. <laughs> you better learn how to nurture <laughs> and be velvet sometimes. <clears throat> they have a mind just like you and I do. Kids are sharper than we were back then. Come on, son. I call my son tech support. I don't know nothing about iPad, iPhone, none of that. He said, Daddy, all you do is turn the button on. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. My printer was broke for two months, Joe. He came home. Thank you, Jesus. Went upstairs, Kim. Got on, got on the Wi-Fi. There you go. Came downstairs three minutes later. Your printer's fixed. <laughs> 
what took me two Amen. months. I'm going to print like crazy. And Lord knows, don't let it break because I don't know when you're coming back. <laughs> But your children, they're on both sides of the street. This sister taught me how to be a nurturer. Can I give you a testimony? Matisse was out in the parking lot, six or seven, riding his bicycle on the cul-de-sac where we used to live. I mean, going warp speed. I've just seen a helmet go past him with a glare washing the car. <laughs> just going like this. Matisse, you're going to fall. Slow down. Like I was talking Greek. <laughs> Matisse, Amen. you're going to fall. Slow down. Matisse, I said you're going to fall. Bam! Me yeah. all scraped up by the tears flowing. I'm looking at him. I told you, you stupid <laughs> This is the disciplinary side of me you know, as a man. Come on, man. Yeah. Coming out of me. I told you to slow. Here comes nurturing out with peroxide, band cotton ball. Walking up on him. Picked him up. Didn't say a word. Let me see, baby. Walked him in the house. Matisse looked at me like this. <laughs> you missed it. Yeah. 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 You missed it. Yeah. All you want to do is holler at him and take that leather and beat him. Nurture him. She said, honey, you gotta learn how to nurture him. You can't be steel all the time. You have to be velvet sometime. Amen. I'm talking to somebody. Amen. 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 And as soon as I learned the nurturing part and the velvet part, Tony, our relationship burned it like father and son, and now we are closer than ever. That's right. It's a That's wonderful right. thing. Mm -hmm. Parents don't beat your kids all the time. You can't, yo, did hear my next note. You can't talk to them like they're your agent and your friend. Amen. I'm the child. I see in Walmart, Kim, the little two year olds turning their parents out. I said, put it in the cart. That's a two year old. Somebody beat both of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Somebody got bail money. I pray you do. Me too. Yeah. 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 No, just pick up two of them. I said, for what? She said, you give them one and put the other one in the car. I said, I bet I don't. Oh, that's right, right, right. She said, that'll keep them quiet. No, they're just going to cry all the way home. But right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> turned us out of shot and one time. Mm -hmm. You mean that? See that finger? Yeah. He cried from the cash register. I wanted to lift him up and bless him. I showed him. <laughs> <laughs> I could. So I said to him, just put him in the car. Put the seat from... Schottenstein on Main Street, the no big street, just tripping, five alarm tears. I mean, just loud. Okay, you want to sleep real good when we get home. <laughs> <laughs> and you <do> nothing. <laughs> Put the window down at the air hitting, done. Yeah. He went to sleep, Vanessa, and guess what? He didn't get what he was asking. That's that was right. our test. That's right. See, they gonna try you. Robbie, wake up, buddy, I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> they gonna try you, Jahar. And they pick sides. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Parents, y'all better talk to each other. Yes, sir. That's right. What did your mother say? When she's like, Dad, go on You ask your father? He didn't understand for a long time the two of us talked. We had a commitment, honey. Come get me when he wants something. Let's talk about it first. So we both were on the same page. One would say no, the other one would say no. <laughs> Here's why. <clears throat> yeah, you got to be able to parent him one-on-one. -on -one. I got over there because I'm going to talk about the father in a minute. Uh, because he's sinless, uh, which is in heaven perfect. So watch this. And I'm out. Here comes the close. You ever hear the, 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 the adage, 
or, or the cliche, imitation is the greatest form of flattery. Yes. Yes. Slide the card. I threw him supreme on purpose because of God who is supreme mm -hmm. being in our life. Mm -hmm. When we imitate him, okay. it is extremely important and a form of flattery that is second to none. Mm -hmm. Our kids will see him. Mm -hmm. Those people who hate us will see him. If they don't, that's their problem. Right, but don't do it with an attitude because they don't respond right away. Well, I'm done with that. Now I'm going to leave you alone. <laughs> you have to let the spirit do its work. That's right. It's not my job, Skip, to, to change folks. The Holy Spirit is the agent of change. Yep. He will do the change. Paul says it this way. Someone will plant. Someone will water. That's God right. will get the increase. That's right. My job is to plant that moment, then plant. You can't do both and expect someone to change. It's not going to happen. Watch this. Overnight. Look how long it took me. And he's still dealing with me. So I gotta see other people the same way. But when we imitate the Father, it's the supreme form of flattery. Let me turn to Ephesians 5:12, and I'm gonna let y'all go. So you think I'm not just making this up? Watch what Jesus is referring to, and Paul pulls this from Matthew uh, 5:48 uh, on purpose. But Ephesians says it better than I can give it to you on the PowerPoint. Watch this. Here it is, from the King James. He says, "Be ye therefore followers of God." If you're going to follow God, we're going to follow God, watch this, not as churchgoers. Well. Yeah. Yeah. As children. Now, let me get this straight before that gets out of hand, Steve, because I know somebody in theologian will email me, text me, Pastor Bishop, Deacon, Doc, can I talk to you? Is that relational he's talking about? Absolutely not. I'm going to mess your theology up. Because children is there, we think it's relational. All right? Let me give it to you what Paul is saying in the Greek and what he means by children. He's simply saying your characteristics ought to be like God's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that child. Wow. Wow. So if he's long-suffering, Kim, guess what I got to be? Yeah. Hmm. I can't have a short fuse. Mm -hmm. wow. And God has that same character. He doesn't have that characteristic. Mm -hmm. That's why Paul lays it in there the way he does. And so here's another thing. And be ye followers, watch this. As children, you're following God. As a child of God, you're demonstrating the same uh, uh, characteristics. And walk, and walk, and walk, and that means your lifestyle. I can't walk in love from 10 a.m. Sunday, 1201. I'm out of love and in hate. Walk in love, watch this, as Christ also have loved us. Think about the love Christ had for us. We celebrated chocolate eggs and jelly beans and I'm messing with you. Several couple weeks ago, as Christ loved us, don't you see him like I've seen him on the cross? You see him getting beaten, sped upon, slapped, crowned with thorns, Bury as Christ loved us, watch this, and give himself. Here we go, Jordan. This is why I'm going to leave you at. What he's saying is our aroma, our smell, should be that of what God likes to smell. A sweet, smelling, Amen. I can't leave my attitude with someone who I don't like. Come on. Because God is not smell. Come on. He wants to smell us. And how we treat others, his nostrils are wide open. That co-worker I'm dealing with tomorrow, guess what I'm gonna do? You can bet on it. Whether they ready for me or not. I'm going to bathe first. Trust me. I'm going to wash them. <laughs> Last on some good smell good. But I'm going over there intentionally to embrace them so God will smell me. Amen. 
there's somebody in this room, you may be dealing with someone, and the odor is not what God is saying is smelling correctly. And before we leave here, take a moment and ask the Spirit to help you. Let me close because Jolena and Gigi were having a conversation. I want to stay here and just close for a minute. Hold on, Joe and Sean, for about three minutes. Don't know if you heard, but let me cover what we were talking about that door because it's been burning my heart. There's a, old, there's a preacher, well known, who has flipped. I'm saying it nicely. But now is telling the world that Jesus' sacrifice is all inclusive. You don't have to choose him. You don't. And he's standing stick, and the church have denounced him, put him out, which is the right thing to do. Amen. He also goes on further to say that there is no hell. <laughs> Netflix has bought into that and produced a, a movie. Wow. Yep. Megyn Kelly interviewed him, which I saw the clip on YouTube, but she can't ask the right questions. So I kept scrolling through YouTube, Cheryl, and, and, and bless his heart, Bishop Henderson, uh, uh, and this individual was on the phone at a radio show, and he schooled him. Bishop Henderson said, no. Here's what that person said. Remember I told you the word addition? Here's what he said on the radio. Well, I added that. Mm. Whoa, 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 pump your brakes. You did what? He said, I added that to what Christ is all. If Jesus said it is finished, and God said he's not coming back, and when he does come back again, it's for his church. He said, I added that, and that was the problem right there. They took him and just said, listen here, even though he stuck to his guns, He's, and he brought in some uh, uh, theologian who's a scientist yeah, trying to validate what he said. But he, Bishop Henderson said, no, it's settled. I don't care who you go get. Amen. And you can't add nothing to the word or right. take nothing away. That's right. That's right. You can't do that. And what he's saying is Christ's cross, Christ on the cross and the crucifixion made an inclusive training that you, don't, you and I don't even have to choose him. God automatically will allow you into heaven because there's no hell. Mm -hmm. I don't know what kind of water this boy drinking. <laughs> Maybe from the money Siota, but guess what? No. And you all will find out soon if you don't know now. Just listen to Pat, you'll see it come to fruition. And Joe Dana and Gigi were having a conversation. I burned Henry out his ears coming up here road talking about it. This gonna lost his gonna lost his mind. You have to make a choice. Watch this, and I'm done. John 3.16 was a scripture. If I was in that conversation, I'd made a phone in. For God so loved the world That's right. that, he that he gave his only begotten son. Here it is, Vanessa. That whosoever believeth, that's a choice. Whosoever. Jesus doesn't force himself on any of us. But he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Whosoever shall open the door, I will come in. I talked with my loved one yesterday. The handle's not on his side. Mm -hmm. That's right. If you ever look at the painting yeah. of the door, there's no handle on Jesus' side. It's on our side. Amen. We have to open up. There's a clear choice we have to make. And so Megan Kelly, and I'm closing, said this, and I wanted to kick my foot right through her. She said, well, 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 I won't say that. She said, well, you, you, you've lost so much and you've given up everything else. And he, she said, but um, now you have millions watching you right now. Wow. Yeah. All about ego, Doc. You have millions watching you. That boy's going to bust hell wide open. Yeah. And I stopped to say this to everyone here. That if you haven't made the choice 
as Jesus as your personal Savior, please do so at this very Amen. moment right now. Amen. Amen. That's why this moment is so Amen. important. It's a choice. Amen. There's a choice we have to make. Here's what Jesus says to this individual. You deny me down here, I'm going to deny you up there. That's right. Go away from me. Yeah, I never knew you. So the word is clear. I know all of us are saved in this building. But here's why I wanted to close, Dr. Barry. Those that we cannot like or do not like and have a tough time with, they may not know him. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And God wants to use us, Dr. Thomas, as his hands, his ears, his voice, and his feet to move to them and to embrace them and to share the love of Christ with them the same way someone shared with us. Don't see someone as your enemy. See him as a child that God wants to redeem. Amen. Pastor, that's easier said than done, and you're right. It's going to, listen, we can't do it on our own. It's going to take the power of the Holy Ghost for us to do that. But we can do it if we yield to the Spirit. I'm out of time, but not talk. There may be someone here today, eyes closed, heads bowed, who do not know the Lord in the pardon of their sin. There may be someone here who may be And there may be someone here who's looking for a church home, and you never said yes. Not to the brick and mortar, but to Christ Jesus. We want you to come. We want you to be a part of our family, and we want to be a part of your family. We make this proclamation every Sunday. We will embrace you with the love of Christ. We will encourage you with his words. And we will equip you with what thus saith the Lord. We want to partner with you, not only vertically, but horizontally. That your struggle becomes our struggle. Your pain becomes our pain. Your burden becomes our burden. 